From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Residential property developer Tricolt and JC listed real estate investment trust Attack have started building the Ellipse Luxury Residential High Rise, which will comprise four buildings in the Waterfall City Precinct in Madrand. Skalkberger has a story. The first of three phases of the mixed-use luxury development involves building two of the four high-rise buildings, and has seen 80% of the units sold already, says Tricolt CEO Tim Kluck. The first two towers, called Newton and Kepler, will be 10 and 11 storeys high, and will be completed during the first half of 2021. The Cassini and Galileo towers will comprise the second and third development phases. The secure precinct will have active and relaxation parks, exercise and relaxation swimming pools, a gym, and an outdoor running track. It is within walking distance of the Netcare Waterfall City Hospital, the Mall of Africa, and Waterfall City amenities, including schools, creches, and public transport. Kluck details the Ellipse project and its development phases. The design philosophy was when we saw the site, we had to do something different. We couldn't do the same product that the market seen. It had to be unique. So we came up with an elliptical shape. It's a unique shape and I think that's one of the factors that's uh, kind of captured the imagination of the public. I mean, if you think of Ponte Towers, it still dominates the Joburg skyline and I'm hoping that one of the ellipse towers in the future will be doing the same, will complement the waterfall skyline. We started with the first two towers. Um, as I said, we launched those in November last year. We are planning to launch a third tower, Cassini, at 16 stories. I would say we're going to be launching this beginning of October and already we've, we've seconded a list of 40 names that are on a waiting list to buy into Cassini. Cassini is 180 apartments and as I said 16 storeys. I, mean, I was very excited to, to get involved in this precinct because you're basically getting in early in a brand new city that's developing. It's also developed by one developer so you're never going to have an old rundown building next to you, you're never going to stare into the back of another building. A lot of time goes into the town planning, the pedestrian footprint, traffic, edges of buildings, views. And for that reason, you know, your, your investment's almost secured for the future. Other news making headlines. Treasury's economic turnaround plan lacks inclusivity. And Discovery Health CEO Jonathan Bloomberg unpacks the NHI. In reviewing Finance Minister Tito Mbaweni's economic growth policy paper, industry organization, the Black Business Council, says the policy is lacking in inclusivity, specific detail and ambition. Well, I think there's a, 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 an accepted um, convention in South Africa that um, um, everything that achieves greater acceptance uh, and traction must be people-centered. Uh, this is an attempt by many sort of uh, finance to uh, achieve inclusion in terms of developing thoughts. Um, but it's, it doesn't go far enough. Uh, if there are some stakeholders who would have believed that such would have come first and foremost through the NEDLEC process, which is inclusive of labor, business, and uh, organs of civil society, including youth um, and uh, uh, civic organizations, then you know, they've probably got a valid point that uh, uh, you cannot take this to logical conclusion uh, without channeling it through that format. The recent iteration of the National Health Insurance has caused significant panic in the health sector, with the discovery share price severely impacted following the tabling of the proposed NHI plans in Parliament. So there is a small section in the bill, literally four lines out of this 80-page bill, that talk about when the NHI is fully implemented. And it's not clear exactly what that means or when that would happen, but when it's fully implemented, medical schemes will be limited to providing cover for services that are not reimbursable by the NHI fund. So that's been... Uh, I think very narrowly and in a way quite alarmistly um, <coughs> interpreted by some media as saying, you know, medical aids are going to be shut out once the NHI is up and running in, t in 2026. We don't see it like that at all. So we think there's been an extreme uh, overreaction uh, in the market and you can already see, you know, various shares of, of various companies in the sector have come back to an extent. So we think it's an overreaction, uh, but that I think is the source of it, is that one section 
in the bill. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our engineering news daily email newsletter.